Today, you're going to learn about the settings options in Obsidian. To find the settings, go down here to the gear icon in the bottom left of your Obsidian window and go ahead and click on that. And we come to our settings menu. Here on the top left, you can see all the different options we have for settings, starting here at the very top with our general settings. And the first thing to check is that you're on the latest version of Obsidian right now in the last day of April, 2024, that's version 1.5.12. And you can check for updates to see if you have the latest. Below that is the automatic updates toggle. And I recommend just leaving that on so that you can always get the latest version as it comes out. But if for some reason you don't, you could toggle that off. Below that, set your language. It's just a drop down. So I am in English, but you could change it to any of these tons of different options here. And then you can be sure that you're using the tool in that language. And then below that, there's a help section. And all you can do there is click on open. And it opens another menu, another window, where there's a link to the official help site, which by the way, their documentation is really good. So you can visit it, that'll open up in your browser. And then you can see, read all of their available documentation. Below that is their Discord chat, which you can join with that join button. And that is, of course, just a community where different users are gathered, including people from Obsidian itself, helping to answer questions and provide support. Below that is an official forum. I haven't actually signed up on the forum, so I don't know what that looks like. But report bugs, have in-depth discussions about knowledge management, etc. So probably similar to Discord, just more of it in a format, forum format. And then the last thing is a sandbox vault. And a sandbox vault is an obsidian vault that is sandboxed, separated from your vault, the vault that you've created. And that's something where you could just kind of play around with it. You could try different features, try different plugins, etc. And you can do that without worrying about ruining or corrupting in some way your personal vault. So I'm going to close out of that and go back to settings in the bottom left there. And then below that is account stuff. So personally, I don't even use Obsidian with an account and you don't need to, which is great. But if you want to sync your vaults across devices, so you have a laptop and a phone and a tablet, then the way to do that is you're gonna need an account and you're gonna to need to register for Obsidian Sync, which is a premium feature. It costs a few dollars per month. Not a lot, but I think it's like $4 a month. Um, and then below that is commercial license. If you're using this for work within a for-profit company of two or more people, then they ask you to purchase and activate a license. Okay, so that's it for the general settings. Below that we have editor. And these are, I'm not gonna go over everything, but just the key things that you might wanna change here. Starting with down here is spell check. Spell check is on by default. This is if you want it to underline with a red line words that you've misspelled. It's on by default. And if if you like that, leave it on. Otherwise, you can turn that off. But most of the other settings here are for formatting, such as automatically indenting lists, um, things like the size of a tab indent right here, where you can change it with that toggle, which in other words, that is how large the indent will be when you press the tab key on your keyboard and other settings related to how the text is displayed within the editor. Moving on to our next section, our third section under options. This is our files and links section. And the key thing to point out here is what happens to deleted files, the second one here. And the default is to move it to the system trash. So in my case on a Mac, that's gonna move it into Mac's trash can. Alternatively, you can have it move it to Obsidian trash which will be a trash can within the app, or you can have it just permanently delete it. Just no trash can at all, just automatically deletes it. So pick whatever one is most conducive to your workflow. The next one is extremely important and it's automatically update internal links. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that on. And what this does is whenever you rename a file, so you have your files linked and you rename it. If you saw in my previous video, the one that's called law of supply and demand, Let's say I take out the words law of, and it just says supply and demand. If I have links created for that note, the note name will automatically 
update across all of those links at every point that it that it exists. So it's extremely beneficial to just go ahead and turn that on. Even if you have it off, it'll prompt you to ask if you want to update those links. But just to make things easy, I turn it on. And then beyond that, you can save where on your computer new files get saved. So you can change all of this kind of information. The next setting is appearance. And this is going to be just what it sounds like. It's going to be how your app looks. And the first one is the base color scheme. So you can set it to adapt to system. My system is set to dark mode, which is why my app is dark. But you could also do light and it looks like that. Or you can manually do it on dark, but I just do adapt to system. It's easy. The next one is accent color and it's set to this obsidian purple by default, but you can move the slider around and change it to any color you want. So maybe you change it to your business's color and you can see when I did that, the, the button colors and the highlight colors changed, but I'm going to restore it back to what it was. You can install different themes from that either you make or that the community makes. You can change the font. So I could change this, for example, to Montserrat. I click on it and it automatically changes my entire thing to Montserrat. I'm going to undo that though. There, it's back to what it was. You can change the font size. You can change the zoom level. This is how big everything shows up. I'm gonna move it back to default. With You can just restore things to default with that little back arrow there. So this is all related to how things appear and show up in your app. Moving on, the next section is hotkeys. Here you can create custom hotkeys for any of these 170 different functions. So find the function you want to create a hotkey for, and then you click on the plus button next to it. So if I want to add cursor above, I'd hit this little plus button, and then it says press hotkey. So it's asking me to type in the hotkey on my computer right now to map that functionality to the hotkey. And the hotkeys need to be a modifier. So on Apple, that would be control option command on Windows, that would be, I believe, control alt and the Windows key. And so then if you click on one of those and then follow it with a letter or a number, so for example, command K, there it is. I just did command K, but it's it's showing up in red because it's telling me that that hotkey's already been taken. So I can delete that. Um, and I could combine, I could do option command K and that it liked that one. And then you can see that that is what that is now set to. Um, I can do it restore if there was a default already there or I can hit this X to get rid of it. And then you can go through and do that for all 170 hotkeys on this list. Next section, core plugins. These are built-in features that extend the capabilities of Obsidian. You can toggle on or off whatever you use here. So for example, the first one is an audio recorder. And if you wanted to use that, if that's something that would be useful to you to record audio notes, you could just turn that on. Um, it's off by default and I'll leave it off because I haven't used that. And then there's also these little plus buttons. And if you click on this, this will go back to our hotkeys section where you can assign a hotkey related to that specific plugin. Lastly, our last section is the community plugins, this one right here. And these are third party plugins created by anyone who wants to contribute a tool that they've built that works with Obsidian. And it says here, most plugins are open source on GitHub, so you can inspect the code yourself, but there's always a risk with using these. You're giving a third party potential access to your notes. So to be able to use these plugins, you have to hit this turn on community plugins button on the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And if you wanted to restrict access again, you can click on this turn on and reload, and then it, it sets you back to your homepage, and then you'd have to go through the process again. But to find the plugins to use, click on this browse button and it opens up this window. And inside of here are all the different tools, the different plugins that you could add to your Obsidian app. And these are sorted by the most popular ones. So this, this first one, Excaladraw has almost 2 million downloads. And then it says below it what this thing does. So this one does edit and view Excaladraw drawings. And there's all sorts of different things here that you can use. Like here's a Kanban one where you can create markdown backed Kanban boards, um, all sorts of useful different things. And you can change how they're sorted right now, most downloaded. 
but you could do alphabetical or you could do a search right here. So that's it for the core settings in Obsidian. Below that, you have more granular controls for the core plugins, like the backlinks, canvas, etc. My recommendation, go through the settings, turn things on, turn things off if it seems like it would be useful, and just experiment. That's how we learn. That's how we get better with the tool.